probably pull up the document what we're talking about today too. I did not do that yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm your other host, Jedi, in Lalafell form from Final Fantasy XIV. I'm a level 56 uh, black uh, black mage thaumaturge um, right now. I'm focusing on uh, building up my gathering so that way I can have higher fish pools when I go fishing in game. Yeah. I think it's like 70. I actually genuinely don't know. I've, I've never reached a level cap yet. I've just recently sort of been replaying it, so I, I I usually only almost exclusively play to fish in this game. Yeah, like I can honestly give an absolute hell about whatever the <laughs> the story is. The van like the vanilla game is really bad, uh, but uh, yeah, right now it's just mainly. Oh, let me fix let me fix that on the stream real quick. I didn't know it looked bad. I'm not centered, yeah, and it's bothering me. Um, but no, I actually don't really play the much of the normal game. I do a couple of raids and dungeons uh, with a good friend of mine who's been playing since like day one PS3 Final Fantasy 14 launch. Yeah. Um, it looks like I moved over more. Um, no, you but, um, you, yeah, you off there. I think we're good now. Yeah. I'm, wa I'm watching it move live. <laughs> My mic was also dead again, so. We're Thank you, Chica. Uh, hi, we Witchy. It's been a minute. Uh, it looks like your mic's not working again, Mayor. I fixed it. Oh, you fixed it. Okay. Yeah, I fixed it while you were centering your gnomish creature there. It's not a gnome, okay? What about, I don't know what that is. So it's a Lalafell. So uh, you've probably seen like those Final Fantasy images of like uh, those like those people with the pointy hats, but you can't see the face. It's usually veiled over with like oh, black yeah, and yellow yeah. eyes. It's them. Yeah, okay. I'm one of them. You're one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. Oh man. All right, so now that we're we're done moving Jadeis, whatever it is, I'm eating spaghetti too. You still can't hear me. I fixed it. It says it's it says it's working. I'm getting signal on my end. Your what did you say about spaghetti? I'm eating spaghettios because I have absolutely. You're literally eating spaghettios right now. Yeah. Wow. How old are That's you? My dinner, man. <laughs> you're like well. you're literally like asmund gold like you can't convince me right now but it, i haven't seen that that's actually you on the other end so one uh it's broke it, it's struggle bus hours right now okay um second it's just a, it's just food like i don't really look at it as like a nutritious meal or anything that's going to be filling me this is absolutely going to do nothing for me but like, it's, struggle like, bus. it's like struggle eating, bus. like gerber baby food i feel like like it's interesting that you brought up asmund uh Asmongold, because I actually talked crap about him earlier. I was like, uh, As well, I'll, I told him Asmongold doesn't have an opinion because he cooks his steak like it's jerky. <laughs> uh, it was the most pitiful steak I've ever seen. Yeah, what I, <laughs> keeps him happy, I guess. Whatever, man. He, he lives Whatever. the simple life, I think, right? Ignorance is not bliss. Oh, yeah. He has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So let's start the show with... Uh, I don't know the thing. The thing we always talk about, uh, which is Halo PlayStation. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, Splatoon. <laughs> so the split, the big Splatoon tournament last weekend. Uh, Halo. We and we got a lot of Halo stuff to talk about because we didn't do an episode last week. We were a little slow on news, but now we got a lot for you guys. So uh, let's start with the battle royale. Well, let, Let's start with the mode that certain affinity Tatanka. is officially making now. Yeah, Tatanka. Uh, so that's official. Uh, and then several people have, including your buddy there, Chez Gordon, uh, have leaked things about it, saying that, you know, it. they've kind of backtracked, though, because at first he said it is a battle royale, but then now they've, they've said, like, oh, well, it's PvPvE with battle royale. Um they're targeting season three or four, apparently, which initially I thought meant one thing. But then we got the season two, well, the 2022 roadmap shortly thereafter, and it, it may mean something else. Um, 
so what what are your thoughts about this in general like like what do you what do you think i mean i don't know should should we could should we conjoin this discussion together with the season two and three roadmap here maybe season four honestly like i'd be okay if they did season three because they're already at this point in time where development is so like slow to like actually move anywhere and like at this point if you don't have a roadmap planned out for season three in which this case their season two roadmap is a roadmap let's just say it's a, not a good one um season three should probably include something along the lines of uh actually having something of value to it so forge will will more than likely come out until season four so at this point why not just continue to flight out whatever this well for whatever is. is season is during season two right they said they didn't have like a specific day, but you're right. It is during season two, but like no commitment on the beta, anything like the that. Beta, and I'm yeah. pretty sure if the beta, if Forge comes out, it'll probably be season four. Um. So my initial thought was that the BR would launch um, at, the, at the one year anniversary of Halo Infinite and, you know, up against you know all the big all the big games of, of the fall, which and their their season three starts in November. That was my initial thought. This was before the roadmap even came out. Um, and I've heard that. I think they said, what? It's been in development for two and a half years. Does that sound right? I, uh, yeah, I remember. I remember saying that, too. A little, yeah. a little bit about that time, which makes sense. I I, I think I, I uh, this is this it's is hard so to say. tough. The, the, the community is 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 up in arms, right? Like like people flipped out when this roadmap came out, saying that it has no content and yeah, you know, it's a disgrace and dead game and every other insult that you could possibly imagine. Um, I who know? I I do think I do think maybe they could launch, launch like the whatever they're gonna call it, Tatanka Beta this fall in, in November. I feel like they have to. Yeah, but if they launch it as a beta, they're just gonna get you know continuously crushed on and. Who, and whenever it comes to Halo flights, they're always so like sporadic, like super far in between and stuff like that. That's how it was for MCC whenever they flighted like Reach, CE, two, uh, two, three, uh, four. So it depends on like how they want to be, be able to handle it. I think that like they should just go ahead and just full launch it because every other battle royale that's ever come out hasn't exactly just like launched in a good state at all. Um, whether you're Apex Legends, whether you're PUBG, whether you're Fortnite, like it's always started at like a somewhat beta phase until they decide to actually call it anything. So just launch it and just continue to build from there. You have That's the what tools I mean. available. Yeah. yeah. But like, I, I mean, like they can launch it as like a beta, but like Fortnite nobody else is technically really still in that. beta. It's like literally the loading screens still say beta. <laughs> it's been out for what, three years? Yeah, but I think they do that because they don't want to call it a game as a service. <laughs> Probably right. They're probably using it to escape paying taxes on it or something. Something like that. <laughs> um, oh man, jo- uh, Jonesy from Fortnite is now just a uh, an IRS skin character. Yeah, Uncle Sam. <laughs> uh, what do you What do you think? Do you think? I I, I got. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I I'm still excited, but also very cautious about this because. I'm of the opinion that that this mode, you know, a Halo Battle Royale should have no PVE in it. I I love Halo PVE. I love, you know, fighting the Brutes and Elites and the Jackals and whatever else. But I really don't want to be fighting Brutes and fighting other Spartans at the same time. Like, I really don't. I I, do do you think it really wasn't that much of an issue in Warzone? Like, if anything, killing like killing those and like the NPCs in, Mm -hmm. in Warzone Halo 5 was like not a big deal at all it yeah. only really ever came down to like mega bosses and the boss fights were actually really cool um they were just basically like these humongous like squish cannon things where you just like continuously shooting them until like you know the bar goes down yeah um and then at the at the end of war zone you'd have to fight lord and eternal and that became like a really hardcore effort lord because eternal. he fights back hard <laughs> so like that one was really fun actually i and, you know, I think we've we've kind of like talked about this very briefly on Twitter. And it's just like it's I think it's kind of worth exploring, to be honest. I just um, have you played Fortnite lately, like in the past no. year, maybe? No, but I don't I do remember like playing and then there was some PvE inside of it. They do a lot of NPC stuff right now. And, and it, it's basically like like you're saying, like. It's not problematic 
like to the point where it like really detracts from the game from what i from what little i've played of it at least like there's npcs you can fight them you kill them you get loot from them it's not like like a, a disruption but also when i do it i'm also like i don't care you know what i mean I, i'm just like mm-hmm. it's just like what does this really add to the game you know what i'm saying like and, and and granted halo enemies are a lot more fun to fight than like fortnite npcs i'm sure but i'm i'm still just I, i'm still just so i'm i mean it really I, depends I on the value of them being in there i want this game i want this to be great because i'm at the point where like, if there's going to be a battle royale a new battle royale that comes along that's going to take on you know warzone fortnite apex or anything like it's got to be halo like there's nothing else on the horizon mm-hmm. that's i mean there's always been rumors of a valorant battle royale but um I don't know. I I just I want it to be great. I don't want it to end up being some like gimmick. Yeah, or like yeah, it's a, it's a battle royale, but it's not like full send. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like that's what you. I'm scared about. No, it, it seems like they're gonna. It, I see exactly what you're saying. It sounds like it. They might just launch like a weird, effortless point to their game that probably like you know put back a lot more resources, and development tools to being something significantly better. I totally get what you're coming from. Like, I, I, I would like, I would like this. Ha- I would like to have like a hundred player battle royale, hundred player Halo battle royale, and firefight, like two separate things. Because I'm totally down for like a dedicated like, you know, PVE type certain like mode like that too. Like, firefight is great. I just, I mean, if I they can know. actually make firefight valuable for something, that'd be cool. But like yeah. currently, like what they're doing with MCC with the flood firefight and ODST, that kind yeah. of stuff is cool as hell. Yeah. I still have yet to play it. I really want to. But um, I don't know. I don't think I'm not saying Firefight doesn't belong in Halo Infinite, but it just it would feel a little bit like random. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, like a little bit not useful to the game or not to yeah, to the game. I think it'd be useful to the community, but it's just like we don't really have those routinely wave after wave games anymore, unless mm-hmm. it's like Killing Floor or Warhammer and stuff like that. If they want to make a separate game similar to that, like by all means go ahead. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't think PVE has a place right now in Halo Infinite only because it's just like it's not that it's a bad mode. It's just not a modern mode anymore. I think people care about unless they want to make it literally like Killing Floor, and that's, uh, that's, which I don't think is going to be happening. No. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think mixing unless it's very, very, very minimal, like. Like dashes of, of PVE, like just just. Just make this a great freaking battle royale, man. Like that that's what that's what that's what Halo needs. That's what the industry needs. Like mm-hmm. I, I am glad that they brought on a whole separate team to do it because that means that, you know, that team is fully dedicated to getting that getting it right. And that gives me yeah. hope. And it's also led by the same guy who created Halo 2 multiplayer online and the ranking system as well. So mm-hmm. You know, it's in good hands of all people. I don't think I've disliked anything certain affinities actually put out these post most recent years, mm-hmm. but yeah, it it could be it could be worse. They could be three four three leading it. <laughs> yeah, and there are twelve people on a development team. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in fairness, so I've got I've got into a few of these a few of these wars, um, and I I I think you and I both have been all over this this spectrum and the Halo Infinite emotion train you know since since it launched um i i i do think i get all the anger like i i i understand it and like believe me i want more halo infinite content too but i kind of think that like half of the reason that i want more halo infinite content i mean halo infinite is great i truly feel i played it again this weekend for a few hours multiplayer and i just had like so much fun i was like these mechanics are so good like i i hit this clip where i like I sniped this guy who was flying off a gravity cannon and then I switched to the uh what's that brute thing called like the spike launcher or whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, I know what you're uh, talking about. I shot a guy with that and then I grappled like off of the roof of this building and then like shot another guy in the head with the sniper rifle and I just like that was incredible. You know, that like that like 30 seconds of just like pure like jubilance and adrenaline. But I think half of the reason that I I'm I'm so desperate for for more Halo Infinite content is because I'm so burnt out of like all these other shooters. Like seriously, like I, I, I like I just I want to play Halo, you know, because I'm the other. I don't really want to play the other games that much because I've played them so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like there's more pressure 
on Halo, at least in my case, than other games. I feel you, dude. I'm really bored right now playing Apex and the split right now. We're at Kings Canyon, and it's just not a fun map either. Uh, and as far as like other shooters right now, like Valorant's looking pretty cool with their new character, but I, I can get really frustrated at that game too quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's you have about to be it. in a mood to play it. Yeah, yeah, I, you do have to be in a mood. You have to have like a, a mindset for it, and at least I do. Because if I go yeah. in there having a good day, I could literally walk out of that game like three games in and end it yeah. on a bad day. And I'd, re- <laughs> I'd just rather not. Um, but uh, I, Halo's definitely got that pressure. It always has. And I sort of feel bad at the same time uh, that the that the community is at its place that it is right now. Although I do disagree with like a lot of people who are saying that this game is absolutely doomed to fail. And that yeah, I saw somebody uh, they responded to me too. They were like, the they Doom posters are so bad. Like they're, they're really all bad. over. Yeah. And I, I saw somebody say like, oh, they uh, should unlaunch the game and then work on development. I'm like, you want to take away a game to that's launched to yeah. re, like to make the game? What? I was like, it's playable by all means. Like, sure, it's got its problems, but there are games that are like currently doing significantly way more that's still buggy. Yeah. Apex Legends is a good example. <laughs> Warzone. And it's just like, yeah, Warzone, too. It's just uh, people. I, I get it. Like, Halo's always I had think- like. It's not even not even actually Halo's always had problems, too, in the past, like whenever it launched, like Halo 2 online services were so bad when it first launched. And then uh, Halo 3 you could barely ever even play a game because the servers were so bad. And then <laughs> Halo 4 uh, or at least Halo Reach, like people didn't like Reach multiplayer and like mm. it changed too much. I did. So it's just, but yeah, it, it was definitely yeah. t- it divided the community for sure. Yeah, it definitely did. But like to say that, like Halo's had like such an amazing track record. I agree to disagree. It's. It, we, we look at things so much differently these days. And it's I also think divisive. that I also think that like the younger audience is coming in, seeing like the older generation Halo players and then just like formulating these like doom and gloom posts yeah. as well, because there's people who are like literally 15 years old making these posts yes. too on like subreddits and stuff I'm like that. I'm like, dude, just chill, man. Yeah, it's I, not it ain't that big. I've gotten to so many fights similar to the one that, that you were just talking about. People saying like, this is the worst Halo game uh ever made <laughs> this is you know they they need to end this game and and uh you know i've seen like i think i talked to you about this like two weeks ago but i've seen it more and more like just stop supporting infinite and just make a brand new halo game because this one's so bad yeah. it's like dude do you even know what a bad game is like they're like, also telling like three like they should give the game away from three for three also because like apparently three for three is super incompetent which I don't I I highly disagree. I think they do make bad choices, though. I think every developer's always made bad choices. There's no such thing as a perfect game. Yeah, I think it's I think there's several things here. I think one, we've got so used to these, which are really when you think about it, far and few between like. But there's like a really high bar for like very well executed live service games. Like when you think of like like Fortnite, for example, which had launched like has like literally multiple updates a week or um you know, Call Call of Duty has constant updates, but again, constantly bugs, a lot of garbage content at the same time. But when you think about all these successful live service games, I can't think of a single one that hasn't gone through like serious like ups and downs. And and like, you know, it it's according to Twitter, you know, 30 seconds away from from being dead or, you know, I mean, even Apex Legends, like, in my opinion, uh, does not have like it, it's a it's a decent live service, but it's not like a great one. I, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think, I think our bar, I think we just, I think people want, like, I think really, I really do think people are expecting a lot out of the halo live service. And maybe like we were expecting too much because you know, they, like you said, like halo and three, four, three does not have a track record of executing like a amazing live service. You know, like it takes time to get there. It took Bungie time to get there with destiny. It took, I mean, Final Fantasy, Everybody, that was a yeah. dead game for a few, like, several oh, years. Oh, a dead game. You we're going to talk about, like, really bad games that have eventually picked itself back up. Uh, well, I was going to name three, but we'll name four. Final Fantasy fourteen is on that list for sure. And it's, like, now one of the best, MM- mm-hmm. highest rated and most played MMOs in the world today. And second, I want to say, is CSGO. Because yeah. when CSGO launched, like, that game was horrendous. Yeah. Valve really pooped the bed hard, and that had a way higher expectation. Um, third would be Rainbow Six Siege, mm-hmm. like Siege launch. Like th- the game is so completely different from what we first saw. It, it was took supposed like to be twelve when it months launched. for it to go anywhere. Yeah, and then 
uh, last, I'm going to say uh, No Man's Sky. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a great game. You know how bad that game was? Diablo 3 was basically a huge flop at launch, too. And then Blizzard saved that um, with, the next, with the next expansion. Uh, I mean, it's, it's common these days. I mean, Destiny, you know, Destiny 2 was also, you know, like the first year or two of it shocked, was people yeah. were thought like, oh, it's, it's dead, it's dead, you know, and then they saved it. Um, Destiny, Bungie is like not even the great example anymore either because they keep constantly making so many like horrific changes to like people's hard work and what the usability of those games are like the vaulting system like every every time they oh, vault yeah. weapons and stuff like that they like players grinded for the weapons they can't use them anywhere and it's Do just like remember? dude what the heck and it's still i mean i think the last time i played destiny it was still really bad what do they call it it's not armor coatings in destiny it's like shaders or something yeah shaders. Like that system was like like disastrously bad for like literally like 10 years like it like they couldn't figure out a way to like fix it um but yeah i i you know i'm starting to think that there's really like like one of two problems here that 343 is having because i don't think i mean i, I want to look at it with you know look at the bright side kind of thing um either one maybe their engine is like really difficult to actual like create content with which i hope not because they worked on the engine for a really long time but that does happen um or so maybe that's holding them back or or two like maybe they literally went into this like and and i don't think it really could be this but who knows you know like like maybe they really misunderstood like like what a live service game is you know, because I, I, I don't know. I mean, what, what do I, you think? What do you think the problem actually is? Because I, I don't want to believe that they are sitting there and going like, oh, you know, like, no problem. I don't I don't think they're being like dismissive or negligent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I th there's got to be something contributing to this problem. I have um, a completely different one with with a little bit of backup, too, because I know somebody who works as a contractor at another company um, and she worked on the UI map interface for okay. the campaign um my my theory is that microsoft is just still making these people work from home mm -hmm. and it's poor workplace culture at the same time that's keeping this game from actually progressing at three because, four three yeah i think that they're and i don't want to use like COVID as the excuse here but this is microsoft and like a mega like a huge major giant in the tech space right now who has to play your cards right with their employees specifically so i'm I'm actually on the I've, I'm still on the idea that like they're just not letting these people go back into the studio to actually work on things. And from what I mentioned earlier, I have a friend who worked on the in that interface, you know, COVID, like I want to say four months in, I asked her, hey, how's it going? And she's like, it's really bad. She's like, I probably spend more time on calls than I actually do building the game. Yeah. Um, she's like, I'm constantly being like monitored, not monitored as in like Big Brother style, but like they're constantly trying to keep Checking track on of me. Yeah on checking ups and stuff like that. And it's just, they're working from home. And I think probably, and this is something that I've experienced as a Microsoft employee too. And it's just the bad habits of employees manipulating their benefits and mm -hmm. the stages that of COVID have allowed these people to do uh, from home. Because don't get me wrong, everybody wants to work from home. Nobody wants to go yeah. back to a fucking office if that meant, you know, staying home, right? Excuse my language. But there's people who get to just <laughs> literally little elf dude swear. All they all they have to do is just one team's message away. Hey, I don't feel good. I'm taking the day off. And right. like Microsoft has a no ask po like policy. Like you don't need to ask why they would feel sad, why they feel sick. They need to take the day off. Um, and this is probably getting it a little bit too deep into the neck of woods of things here. But I would 100 percent guarantee and make put money on the table that says there's people who work at the studio who are just saying, I don't want to work right now. I'd rather yeah. just not, not do anything that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and it sucks too, because we all know that three, four, three has a, a extra, a extraordinarily like small team, uh, and has only internalized so much that maybe their contractors are also these people who are also working from home and aren't See, in a studio. Working and I, stuff. I, I think you did hit the nail on the head there. I, I don't think yet that, 343 and part of the answer might be um you know bringing certain affinity on board because i've heard that microsoft is is preparing an offer for them or already has to buy them um 
maybe the answer is that they do need another like a, a dedicated second or even third studio working on halo because you know my, uh activision blizzard famously has like 12 or 13 studios working on call of duty and you know epic i think epic is like epic is like uh Respawn Entertainment, for example, that makes Apex, this is only like 300 people. Epic Games is like 3,000 people uh, working yeah. at, working on Fortnite. And if you remember when Fortnite hit, they canceled everything. Like they had like two or three other projects in the works and they just canceled everything. And they're like, all 3,000 of you are working on Fortnite. Like that's how they produce that level of, of content. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think Microsoft has invested enough yet in actually like building out 343. I think knowing that, Microsoft that, and they're, it takes a long probably, time. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. Knowing Microsoft, too, I would put money on that. They think that they have the best tools in the industry to make it work at a small and efficient scale without spending too much, too. That's that's something that I know, like even at a sales level that went down into the development tools that I had to sell. I had to sell. Um, so I, I honestly like it's still also on 343, not just Microsoft here. Um, whenever it comes to just like how things are being put together. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly there was bad leadership going on. Yeah, I think there's probably good leadership. Yeah. It's, it's interesting whenever people say like, oh, they don't listen to the fans or anything like that. I'm just like, did you look at the difference between Halo 5 and Halo Infinite? Yeah. They've listened way more than yeah. you would ever like to think, too. And I, I think I think, too, when they brought Joe Staten on, like with only like a year left in development, I think that I think they were at a point. This is how I figured this out, like. This is how I see it happening, like Phil Spencer and whoever else, like at a point where like. OK, like we realize there is something wrong here and we need somebody that we can trust to, to come in and like figure this out. Like, what do we need to do to fix this situation? Not just in the short term, but hopefully the long term as well. And I, and I think that's why Joe Staten is there mm -hmm. because things do seem to have gotten pointed in the right direction since since he came on. Not that everything's, you know, perfect. But um, Man, it's so interesting to, to see Joe Satin like back in the mix of things. But like what's also funny is the game he worked on before was that um, episodic uh, Microsoft game. Um, it was about the trans guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His twin sister. I forgot what it's called. About. Yeah, he was, was working. He, he, it was that game. Yeah, it was a flop. <laughs> I, I played a little he, bit of it. I think oh, he like, wrote super the, uninteresting. Didn't he just write that game and record, though. Like, I think his. I thought he was like writing those games. I I could be wrong. I could be wrong too. I genuinely I genuinely do not know. Yeah. Um, but you know, interesting journey for him to go from yeah. Bungie to Recore. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of stuff before Recore. I don't think he was actually involved in studio stuff. I think he was just involved like on the marketing side of things. That's, so yeah. Back to development. Yeah. Um, but you know, with Joe taking over, there was probably like a lot of shifting and changing in like expectations and stuff like that. And Again, knowing Microsoft, once a new manager comes in, stuff does not hit the floor like immediately. It takes a good amount of time. And knowing how big the studio in the company and the contractors that they worked with, like I'm pretty sure it took a very long time for things to start moving. Like whatever 343 is like, we're listening. Like they probably more than likely are, but they have to communicate that across several yeah. different teams. And like I, mean, I said, they're they're still work. I know for a fact that they're still working from home. Like, yeah. like I still have Microsoft friends. Like they're still working from home. They have instructions to visit their offices or their or their campuses on X specific days uh, for X amount of time. But other than that, majority of the time, they are still working from home. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was like, I think I told you before, I was like absolutely shocked at the feedback that 343 shared, um, like in that whatever it was, like a month or two ago, because they hit every single thing on the head of like what the player sentiment was like. They did not get anything wrong. They did not mince words. It was like they had it like the player sentiment like down. Mm -hmm. Um, do, do you want to talk about wh what's what do you want from the Halo Battle Royale? Like, like, what do you see it being like? What do you what's your dream scenario? I actually have no dream. I just want a Halo Battle Royale. <laughs> and <laughs> like, if I could be honest, like, I just I honestly don't want 100 players. I think that's a little bit too much. But mm -hmm. considering how the uh, time to kill uh, differences between like apex legends and like PUBG, it probably would work out better if there was like 100 players in it but i'm okay with like a 60 player lobby i'm okay with those numbers mm -hmm. um so that way the map's not like extremely massive and stuff like don't that make it like storm point in apex please. yeah don't make it like storm point for love of god um <laughs> but like for the most part like I, I just want it to be a good 
good game. That's that's about it. I don't really have the high expectations. I don't I'm, know what I want from a Halo Butter Rail, but I just know that I want it. I'm really excited by the premise of I've I've actually had a, I tweeted about this, but if they use the same health system as Infinite, I think they could really change the flow of Battle Royale in a really interesting way. If they don't, if you don't have to use health packs at all, you know, like no health, no armor. It's just like being a Spartan in Halo Infinite. Um, and just, you know, your health recharges. I, I think that could change the flow of combat and battle royale games in a really interesting way. And it, it maybe that maybe they would try it and it would be terrible. I don't know, but just, you know, just duck down, you know, regen your shield and then jump right back in the fight. You know, I, I think that could be really fun. So yeah, and I agree. I was thinking about like apex and like what makes it so valuable and like the, the, the complexities of like that game and fighting. So like, mm -hmm. I, I was playing and I'm just like, I can't believe I'm standing in front of a door because I just got my <laughs> my shields ripped and my health pooped on and like holding there it is, shut. Yeah. And I'm holding it shut. And I'm just like the complexity of the other person right now has to kick this door down or have a grenade on hand, which is unlikely. Most of the, it's like a, it's usually like a 60, 40 chance they do. Um, but like in this case, it's just like the the complexity of that entire moment it happens in within like maybe less than five seconds yeah and i think that's what i love a lot about apex is that like there's so much that's so small and narrow that like you're like what what's next like what can possibly happen next and halo has an opportunity too you know the door um, thing in apex was an accident no way yeah they did not mean for it to be that way it, it ended up being that way <laughs> <laughs> oh man I remember doing it when it first came out too. I was like, I'm like, oh, this door, they can't get into the try to keep the door down. <laughs> but like, think about it, like the 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 rights and wrongs that can happen in that whole entire scenario of just kicking a door down and making yourself unavailable. Like, like that's so competitively like niche. It's a very complex expect. game. Yeah, I'm 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 still surprised at times because I hear from a lot of people that try to go from playing like you know just casual call of duty and and so on you know they, they try apex and they hate it like they play like two games and they're just like i it's too hard i, I can't i can't play it you know but i, it, I don't know yeah well um, i mean in terms of halo um we can only hope i think season two uh is gonna be fun i can't wait to play it next week i, do, I am too I, I i think the new i'm happy for two new maps and that's the thing i'm trying to just be positive man like i'm trying to like I'm getting new maps, I'm getting new modes, I'm getting a new battle pass. I have a reason to play Halo. And you know, and all things all things considered, we've gotten more Halo content and discussion in these past 6 months than any time in like the past like 5 years. Between Halo Infinite's launch, the Halo show, um, you know, they're still updating Halo MCC. And I, it's all doom and gloom, but when you think about it, there's actually you know, there's actually some really good stuff. Yeah. And yeah. You, you know, the thing is, this is video games, man. Like, it's OK. All... To play, it's OK to play other games if you're not having fun with it or, you know, just go play something else. And whenever you feel like playing Halo, play Halo. You know, people have like the, some weird principle expectation that they have to exclusively. That's what play I mean. The, but we, like, we, I think we, they it, go, go, go. We've got this weird sense of that, like every game needs to be a game that you can play for like 22 hours a day, every single day, you know, like and it's not the way all games are meant to be played and it's not even healthy either like not not physically mentally emotionally like it's i don't know it's it's go really touch grass weird. kids go touch some grass yeah i mean I, play a different game i don't know but i'm doing i'm playing Elden ring in the final fantasy yeah it feels so good to be a gamer yeah for real uh all right let's talk about some other stuff so i know you're not a world of warcraft guy uh, but they did reveal a new expansion. It was called uh, Dragonflight. Uh, you, you don't oh, care. Man. About... Well, you're an MMO guy in general. Uh, I mean, I, I've never really cared much for a while, but uh, I do care about watching uh, Blizzard make wrong decisions all the time and seeing the Internet explode on them. <laughs> uh, Dragonflight has actually been received uh, very positively relative to everything else they've done with WoW for like the past four years. Um. I guess I see the niche side of things. I keep seeing um, probably, and it's not like I agree with them or anything like that. I just like seeing, um, again, just the, the the arguments of it all. I mean, like I could talk, I could complain about how doom and gloomers are like being annoying about Halo, mm -hmm. but like at the same time, that's still like free content for me, dude. I love it. I love Twitter. Free. It's literally yeah. free. 
Um, so like whenever it comes to WoW, like you see so many different perspectives, and the favorite one I have is just seeing people get mad at it. Uh, the WoW community is pretty salty right now. Too. Yeah, they're pretty salty about everything, and they have the right to be. Um, most of the people involved, like in World of Warcraft, though, uh, on like the YouTuber side, from what I've heard, people are like pretty cautiously optimistic about it. That they're kind of taking like a back to basics approach. Um, this is one of those things too that kind of pisses. Like, you know, we're talking about toxic fandoms and stuff again. But like the same thing with Halo. I've constantly said this. <coughs> people get so entitled and have these expectations. It's like, how much did you all pay for Halo Infinite? Oh, it's a free to play game. <laughs> you know, like, well, I, I don't know. People get so upset, and it's and then and then I hear people say like, "Well, I spent eighty dollars on skins for this game," and it's like, "Well, that was your choice, dude. Like, you're not yeah, entitled dude. to anything. Like, why did you?" Wait till they find out. Wait till they find out how many how much money people spend on Valorant skins, and they yeah. almost never use them. Well, well, and again, like. Why you bought those skins? Like, did 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 some developer somewhere promise you that if you bought these skins, then there would be a new map release every th every three weeks? Like, I, I don't, they're just cosmetics, dude. Like, you're not entitled to anything. Like, I I don't know about it. Um, but Diablo, did you see that Diablo? Do you you know what Diablo Immortal is, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, I'm, that's pretty cool. It's coming to PC. Yeah, I was gonna say, are you a Diablo guy in general? Uh, I really loved Diablo 3 when it came out, actually. Yeah, I liked it. I was ignorant of, like, in gaming internet and stuff like that at the time, so I mm. loved Diablo 3 when it came out. Um, I, I like Diablo out, 3 quite a bit. Yeah, and then I come to find out, like, a little bit later on the line, people did not like Diablo 3 for a lot of reasons. Um, but, like, in this case, I love Diablo 3. I thought that was so cool. I loved the story for it, too. Uh, it was a different kind of exposure for me. I, think I never if you expected played, to be playing a game like that. I think if you it. played Diablo 3 in isolation... I mean, def it's, it's a great game now, for sure. But I think if you play, even at launch, if you played it in isolation, I think you could definitely enjoy it. Like, at, all the rage was when you started, like... It was around, like, the, about the online auction house and, like, all that stuff. And if you, if you just, like, never paid any attention to that and just, like played it for the gameplay and stuff but th mm -hmm. there was a lot of fun to be had even at launch i remember people were like complaining about like drops and stuff in diablo it, mm -hmm. it, and this is the thing about these like games where it's just like it's a grind game and what is the expectation on like loot and stuff like that like i was still like going to work as like a near a pretty much part-timer and still barely having having enough like time to actually like grind these things so mm -hmm. it's just like it's so crazy how these people who are like absolute like shut-ins hmm. be able to like complain about a game at it's like highest point ever that literally like 90 percent of the, its player base will never be able to achieve is like doing these crazy numbers in terms of like oh why this is game is bad and because i have no life and i yeah. played it too much and that's, now i have nothing to do with it i mean that, that's a constant balance that developers have to make too right they have to try to balance their games for like the top one percent of players because they know that those people generate a lot of like you know, content creation and attention and like Reddit posts and YouTube videos and they have loud voices in the community. But 90% of the player base is not going to play the game the way that that top 1% does. Like you're saying, like it's whether it be like loot or, you know, they Blizzard has this problem. A lot of people think that in World of Warcraft, that has been one of the problems is they got so hyper fixated on on things like all like the high end raids and like their almost like the esports side of things like the race to world first kills and, and all like their raids and you know high end arena pvp that like they lost you know the 90 percent of the player base which just wants to do stuff like you're like you're doing in final fantasy like just just fish and have fun with my friends and you know just i don't know kill some stuff in some dungeons you know like it's tough for developers to balance mm -hmm. that i think no 100 percent, and there's no perfect like way to do that unfortunately and mm -hmm. i think people on the internet feel like they have too much of an opinion that they need to share yeah <laughs> and uh you know it's great because like literally no one cares about your opinion until they see it for the first five seconds of their life and then they get offended and you have that argument with it. it's stupid <laughs> man you know, i love the internet <laughs> the internet the internet was a mistake internet was a mistake and so was bill uh bill gates and his you know future child that he's harvesting in his belly <laughs> What was it? Do you remember that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? I think it was called Junior. 
where he Arnold Schwarzenegger became pregnant. No. <laughs> yeah, this, this was like an early 90s movie. Uh, he became pregnant himself, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think Danny DeVito was in it. Um, that sounds horrific. I need to see it. Yeah, <laughs> probably should be classified as a horror movie, but I think it was supposed to be a comedy. Oh boy, horror is beyond my imagination, used for exploitation. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so, so, oh, here we go. Let, let, let's talk about Sega. Because we don't get to talk about Sega very much. Sega, or in a good way at least, and I don't even know if this is a good way, Sega announced that they're rebooting both Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio Future, like full-fledged AAA reboots. What do you what do you think about that? A lot I've never of even played those games to care. No? Either one? No. No. I'm, I'm surprised you never played at least Jet Set Radio. I, I touch grass, man. I don't know how anyone has expected me to actually know what those games were. <laughs> I only found out about those games because niche Sega gamers are on Twitter. Well, see, this is this is this is exactly what I was going to say about it. Is both? I mean, Crazy Taxi was okay. It was more arcade cabinet oriented, but it was okay. It was like a big Dreamcast game. Jet Set Radio Future uh, was an amazing game at the time, but I and and fans are like heralding this, you know, these comebacks that Sega's bringing back two of its old franchises and. They're viewing this as part of a larger initiative by Sega to actually make more video games and bring back more of their gaming franchises, which at face value, I agree with. But mm -hmm. I, I really I kind of see both of these games coming back and just not selling any copies at all. Just it's like everybody's going it, to that's like the whole Shamu thing, right? Like everybody asked for a, a sequel to sequel to Shamu. For like Why do you like say Shenmu? So weird. Shenmu, Shamu, Shamu the whale, whatever. Shamu. You know what I'm it sounds about. like Shamu, dude. Sh <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Everybody picks three four three three forty three U.S. Yes, and they're still U wrong. U.S. N.C.A. Whoever. Uh, Shenmu Naruto. How about that one? Stop. <laughs> uh. But, but everybody asked for it, and then when they finally made it and spent, like, the, you know, however many millions of dollars to make it, it literally, like, was stillborn. Like, nobody cared whatsoever after 15 yeah. years of begging and begging and begging. Well, they also made them bad. Well, Shen Shenmue, yes. <laughs> Shenmue remake was awful. I, was it bad? I mean... It was bad. No, not the remake, the third one. Oh, the third one? Did you play oh, the third the, one? The remake was so bad that the third one was overshadowed at how bad the first one was. That could be. That could be. The remake. I, uh, I also, I don't remember much about Shinbu 3 uh, conversationally, but I do know that people didn't like Shinbu 3 either. I feel like, uh, I, that's if what I, I remember mean. correctly, I could be wrong. I think they actually, like, completely, like, rewrote characters that did not react or act the same way that they normally would have. So it just didn't feel authentic, I think. Well, I don't think you can, like... It's one of those things where, like, you, I don't think you can go home again. You know, if you try to recreate something from that far in the past, it's never going to work. Like, I mean, it's kind of worked in some places. Like, Futurama is a good example, which is also coincidentally getting another reboot. I, I know nothing about Futurama. I know what it is, but yeah, I can't Futurama speak to had the something similar. Of it. Like, it had it had some time where it was sold off, and then I think it was sold off. Regardless, Futurama was. Pretty much in the dumps, and then eventually it picked itself back up mm -hmm. uh, to get another season, and then they ended it on Comedy Central. Yeah, it got sold, and then Comedy Central bought it, and then Comedy Central ended it. And now Hulu has access to it, too. Honestly, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's fine that they're, you know, making more, but I thought that they closed a very nice story of future. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is that, like, it's doable. Like, you could it's drop rare, something though. and pick it back up. Yeah. It's rare. Super um, rare. And, and the thing with Shenmue was, like, they made it exactly the same as the first two. And the first two were like so as far as gameplay formula goes, it's so dated, you know, like like there's no place for this style of game anymore, really. And and it, it sucks to say that, but it ends up coming true. And I really worry that Sega is going to do that with Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio, that mm -hmm. they're kind of going to ruin our fond memories. Like you want a new one, but at the same time, it's like, I don't be careful what you wish for. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean, in terms of Sega right now, I mean, like, they've kind of got something going on with Sonic, at least. So, I mean, yeah. maybe they're learning for once. I, I want a Ugandan Knuckles game. I want Sega to make a new IP that's good. Dude, I, I don't think they're capable. I, I really don't. I, you, 
I don't think Sega has like a lot of developers even left working there, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's uh, new. I don't know. I, every time somebody talks to me about the new Sega game, they're like, dude, I'm so hyped. That game looks so good. I'm like, that's literally an Unreal Engine for fan made game that you're looking at. That's just that's not even an actual game. I think that game actually looks awful. <laughs> I think they're going to ride Yakuza and Sonic for a while as far as that they can sense. get them. Yeah. Wait, is it the guy who makes Yakuza no longer working at that? Yeah. Sega anymore? Yeah, he's okay, with Tencent yeah. now. But I'm sure they'll still keep making them. Man, Microsoft should buy Sega or at least buy Sonic so that or way they can cheap. add another game uh, to their list of uh, disappointments because they can't keep <laughs> consistency with their fans. Uh, well, I mean, at least with Sonic, it, it's already expected. Like, you just know that yeah, three quarters of saying. everything that comes out work. related to Sonic is going to be complete trash. Oh, man. Oh, did we did that talk about uh, how I went to go see the Sonic movie? Oh, no, I got to hear this. You got here. Do, do your review. Do your review. I OK, I liked it. I really did. It had its fuck. It had its the first freaking one? problems. Yeah, I watched the first okay. one. Also. Did you like the first yeah. one? So first one was like a little bit of a miss for me. Um, I, and it, it kind of emphasizes my point with Sonic 2. But the whole entire Earth subplot uh, is so useless and so like I like it makes me want to peel my skin off. It's so pointless. It's so dumb. I don't care about it as a Sonic fan. But, you know, some things you have to accept in life is that this is a marketing product to yes. sell Sonic. So you got to make it appealing to the normies. And I say normies as cringy as I possibly can, because that is what they are whenever you watch this movie. But um, Sonic 1, it was all right. And they, they kind of did some cool stuff with it. But I was like, eh, this is this is a good start. Sonic 2. It feels like it's finally coming together. And yeah. it, the stuff that's coming up for Sonic 3, it's it's like, ooh, OK, let's this is going to be great. Sonic 2, uh, again, it emphasized my point for like the subplots for Earth. Like it's just pointless. It's dumb. It's mediocre. Like none of the characters there have real value. Uh, mm -hmm. They try to like use it as a uh, as like a what's the word I'm looking for. They, they try to use it to push like Sonic's growth as like this kid um and uh, it's, Sonic's it's, it's so growth dumb. is like such a, a strange statement it's a, it is a strange statement because just like whenever you play the games you know sonic just to be a hero who like, can yeah. act childish and that's like, like the fun the growth part of, of mario as a character you know like, right it, it it doesn't make sense so like they've got they, they had a scene in here where this like one lady was like set to marry some other guy who was actually an fbi agent who was who was there to like they had like a whole like near like I think almost ten minutes of this scene, and there was what? nothing Sonic related. And I'm like, I do not care about these people at all. These, like, this is doing nothing for me. Maybe it's setting up for like the next movie or something like that. But like, genuinely, they had the guy from Criminal Minds in it. <laughs> it was so <laughs> weird. I was like, I don't care about this. But the Sonic, the tails, uh, and the knuckles thing was like super well done. Especially Eggman. Jim Carrey did really good as Eggman again. They didn't let him run the show this time um i felt like knuckles was like a really great fresh like breath to the to the series and so was tails is he gonna uh, be back for three you think knuckles? yeah okay oh 100 percent uh tails was also great they also had the same voice voice actress who has I heard been that. voicing tails in the movie I thought, was, I thought that was really cool i didn't realize it until the very end um but uh do i do i get spoilers right now do you want spoilers yeah yeah i could care less so at the end Channel, uh, right yeah, they brought out Shadow, and it was just like, dude, this is going to be so freaky cool. I asked my wife's four-year-old, uh, not not her nephew, but it's her cousin's kid. He's he's mm -hmm. four, and he's he was wearing a Sonic shirt the other day, and I asked him, I was like, oh, man, did you see the new movie? And he's like, yeah, and I was like, how was it? And he's like, they're bringing out, like, the black guy, the, the black hedgehog. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, cool. Like, that was the one thing that he took away from it was like, that's the first thing he said. I was like, oh, we're okay. canceling him. Yeah, <laughs> we got to we got to do it before Elon takes over completely. Oh, yeah. but no, but adding adding uh, shadow in there is was really fun. I can't wait. Uh, I hope they don't break and like, I hope they don't break his character in the movie uh, like they do in like Sonic Boom. Um, I didn't watch a lot of Sonic Boom. I'm not like a huge Super Sonic fan, by the way. I'm not I'm not that crazy about Sonic, not but I know enough to like at least talk about it. So I hope, uh, I hope that's pretty cool. Uh, and I made up a really uh, awkward point that uh, next movie is also going to include Amy in there. So now we're just going to see I like don't this even know who that really is. awkward. Amy is Sonic's girlfriend, basically. Sonic's not so, a girl. 
Are you memeing? Are you trolling? Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, I was going to say, it's just like the next movie. It's just going to be like this awkward, angsty, horny <laughs> Sonic and Amy. Just Please, like, no, just stop it there. Jim Carrey <laughs> says he's retired from acting, so maybe they'll cancel it and save us all. I, I, yeah, he says he's done. He, he he's he's he did an interview and he was like it was like right around the time sonic 2 came out and he's just like you're never gonna hear another celebrity say this he's like but i'm i'm very happy with like the career that i've had i've got everything that i need and he was like unless something comes along that really takes my breath away he's like i'm 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 done like i'm i'm just i'm good yeah. i'm set well he, he's probably lying but maybe i mean they left a lot of like seems implications mentally Ill, that so i <laughs> He kind of probably he's been through a lot. I do. Feel yeah, that yeah, he has. That's what I mean. Um, like, he seems like he's, you know, maybe prepared got to like issues. Just, yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, they left like a lot of open interpretation with Eggman at the very end. Like they couldn't find his body. Actually, it's it's a family show. You're not going to find dead bodies anywhere. <laughs> um, but he was gone. So uh, they can just let like Shadow be the main antagonist, though, yeah. uh, in the next movie without without Eggman in there. Like maybe Eggman can play some like behind the scenes stuff and then maybe something comes up with like sonic 4 or something like that but yeah i, I love the movie it was great i really look forward to the next one and uh, i hope there's a good sonic game that comes out soon that isn't I, well, whatever the hell you know i was gonna say i i am vaguely interested in what sega's doing in their new sonic game because it looks like it almost looks like they're taking like a breath of the wild approach and that's like speculative because i don't think they've shown gameplay yet but um, uh, they showed in an engine, yeah. which pretty much it literally looked like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it looked like it reminded me like Shadows of the Colossus or something like that, Um, which I don't know. It, it'll probably flop, but <laughs> I, I'm interested that they're at least doing something new with a, 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 a they, they've never really nailed the 3D Sonic thing. So no, I'm glad, they have. I'm they glad. absolutely have. Oh, wait. Sonic Adventure sucks. Sonic Unleashed. I don't even know what that is. Sonic Forces like bad game, but they looked it looked great. Sonic I Generations also. I stopped caring also. after like yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, like Sonic Sonic Unleashed is definitely worth your time. That was a really fun game, and I actually really want to replay it because uh, I don't have like a lot of massive memories of it. But Sonic Sonic Generations was great too. Sonic yeah. Forces had opportunity. I think Sonic Forces looks great. It was just a boring game. I I I think you and I discussed this. It's hard to like nail a 3D Sonic game without it is it feeling like a roller coaster on wheels because it's on wheels most of the time. Yeah, and that's yeah. what Sonic's always been. Even as a 2D platformer, it's just like it's a game on wheels for the most part. Right. But you know, th it still looks great. And Sonic Unleashed was like a huge step backwards in terms of like the you know gotta go fast. Yeah. Um, Sonic Unleashed had times where it was just like a beat 'em up, and it was fun. I loved it. I'm curious to see what they do with this new one at the very least. I, I'm. We'll see. We'll see. What was that game called? I think it was just called Sonic 4, right? I literally have no idea. Sonic will celebrate his birthday this year with the release of new Sonic Origins game collection. Yeah. Oh, that was literally announced yesterday. Um, I'm kind of interested. Do, do you even want to talk about this? This Microsoft and Sony building these ad, uh, yeah, in, in like game. To. You do, yeah. Okay, all right. So <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll introduce the topic. Uh, okay, so or do you want to you want to introduce? Oh it? no, you can go. You can go. You're better at it than I am. Okay. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, yeah, Frank, people will buy Sonic One for the tenth time at full price. That's exactly what will happen. Maybe they'll get a free NFT with it. Um. So Microsoft and Sony, it's been leaked, are both building in-game ad platforms. And this is how I envision this. And you tell me, Jedi, if you what your take on it is. Because a lot of people are like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I actually envis envision this done in a, in a more tasteful way. So um, imagine you know, driving around in Forza. And, you know, there's actual, you know, when you pass by, there's billboards up. But on those billboards is actual paid advertising for Axe Body Spray or, you know, whatever. Advertisers will have the opportunity to actually buy, you know, quote unquote ads like in these game worlds or driving around in Grand Theft Auto. And on the radio, you hear that uh, an ad for, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh 
Man, you're giving them a lot of credit right now. Some, I have complete opposite. Some products, uh, Grandma Brown's baked beans. I, I, I don't know, but that's how I envision it working, at least tastefully. Um, that, that's what I hope it's gonna look like. What do you think it's gonna look like? I think they're like quite literally just gonna place advertisements on like in-game menus and stuff like that, and so? let it be, yeah, and just let it be just uh, uh, re relinkable, so that way like content can actually be you know gone through. It'll work just like Twitch. And there might be even be a time where I think that even whenever the game is loading, you're going to see ads in the loading screens like that could be just simple stuff like that. But I don't think it'll be intrusive to the gameplay in no way, form or fashion. I think um, I don't think Sony or Microsoft's will, but I think others could be intrusive. Yeah, others, like others could be. Yeah, I don't I think Microsoft is more guilty of probably <laughs> making that happen than than Sony, to be honest. Um, but I'm pretty sure that Microsoft got like the brunt of it first because they're the ones probably with the more uh, refined tools and mm -hmm. uh, relationships to make that happen because they they're technically already doing it with their dashboard, mm -hmm. yeah. Which it's not intrusive in any form of no, way. Like literally, not. I see it, I see it, and I'm like, well, I saw well, that for the first time. <laughs> and, you know, other com companies have been trying to, especially over the past five years, uh, quote unquote non gaming companies have been trying to market to gamers more and more right like i remember at pax east like two years ago there was uh like geico ha had a booth there and they had like geico insurance for gamers like that was like they they recognize that gamers are now a huge market and that they need to like you know mm -hmm. advertise to them yeah so but, i mean it makes sense but i think the ads that we'll be getting in these games will be rel will be relatively relevant like you're saying like with the xbox dashboard it's it's like usually gaming and movies and tv you know, like mm -hmm. stuff gamers are interested in, you know, anime, not actually Grandma Brown's baked beans, I don't think. But <laughs> you never know. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll be like stuff that'll uh, be normal consumer products. Yeah, I think, I think we'll see ones. like Tide Pods, like yeah. Tide Pod advertisements and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but like it's interesting Tide Pod challenge. It's interesting because it's just like uh, what I was going to say is like with Microsoft, they're more likely to do this because they have the tools and like those partnerships agreements. But like it had to get to a point where Sony was just like, you know, we're not we may not be offering the same type of like multiplayer content Xbox is offering, but we're still an obvious leader in this entire industry right now. Like we have to be able to get on top of it. Why would we like just straight up ignore that? So it, there's it's so much it's money strange. to be made in advertising. Like, yeah, it's. It, there's just so much and everything is about really, impressions these days and yeah no it, it really does matter when it comes to your brand growth and it's interesting is that the community obviously is so gamer so principle centric around like what does it mean to be a gamer yeah um you know gamers are like the most hypocritical people and they don't even realize it yeah. it's that whenever <laughs> they succumb to like literally being a a marketable product all on their own without even intentionally trying like for yeah. years gamers have just been like it'd be really cool if i can like gamify my room with like figures and with like cool wallpapers and stuff like that. lights everywhere yeah and then just like get insanely upset at the fact that like they're now recognized as like one of the like biggest industries in the world and you're like you don't think anyone wants to capitalize on that like yeah I mean, you see, did this the, they did this to themselves, to be I, honest, at this point. I was listening to something and gamers get so mad about it, too. Every single time. Oh, my God, I'm being treated as a consumer. Um, you, you buy a consumer. things. Yes, exactly. You buy things, D you that's dummy. I, <laughs> but I heard a thing this morning. Um, it was about uh, Activision Blizzard's active monthly users. Activision Blizzard has 300, 300 million active monthly users. Um, which is insane. So then when you think about like, okay, how do we make more money from those 300, uh, 300 million people that we have in our products in one way or another, other than, you know, in game, other than actual game purchases, in game purchases, subscription fees, it's advertising. Like it's okay. Oh. Yeah. We could, we could make, you know, X amount of money if we just stick up, uh, uh wh you know, like, why am I failing to think of like advertisements that would work in a, in a game? But like it's Grand Theft Auto is the perfect example for me because and I hate to say it. I hate to use this this phrase, but it's literally that like metaverse concept, right? Like, yeah, you know, Rockstar yeah, builds this is. giant city that it's very lifelike and you can drive around and you can stick literal lifelike things in that city. 
imagine the actual potential of advertisement that you can do in there because like rockstar has such a has such a a funny expectation on how it sells its products uh from the real life world to its own world it's like well we'll just go with like fast food like imagine at mcdonald's yeah. an actual mcdonald's inside of rockstar games as an advertisement and mcdonald's just like yeah we understand that this is how we have been interpreted over the years we'll we'll join the, our own joke will be a part yeah. of the joke that we've created all in our Mountain own. Dew like, does that it. would be yeah Mountain Dew does, yeah, you're 100% correct Mountain Dew does it and it's just like they can do it and it would actually Doritos be really well it. thought of if gamers want it to be so authentic and non-intrusive you know they gotta allow these brands to be able to do it yeah and like I mean did you see uh Dr. Dre release a new song within the past year I would say and that song was released exclusively through Grand Theft Auto Five or GTA Online or whatever it was. It was yeah. like you could listen to it. That's where he, Dr. Dre, a nearly 60 year old hip hop legend, released a new song was through Grand Theft Auto. Like, that's like literally nuts to me. But he's got but nothing to lose at that point. The though. world we but live that's in. Cool. Too. Yeah. yeah, that's what I, I mean. Yeah, like, cool he's like, well, there's 100 million people that play this game. You know, like it's that's scary a lot too. It's scary because like he'll he'll he could do that because he can. He he won't take a loss from that. He probably no. spent a lot of money it, on that. I mean, and gained nothing. Take two probably paid him. Uh, you know, yeah, more than likely they probably paid but, for like production and stuff like that. Yeah. But knowing Dr. Dre, he probably does his own in-house production. They probably paid him a million dollars just for the rights to the song. Like, yeah, literally. Yeah. Um. But like, what's scary about it is that that's gonna leave a lot of like existing culture and uh other mediums like out in the dust too like i know it's scary because like i remember uh like playing video games like need for speed most wanted and like just jumping on like a track with like bullet for my valentine disturbed and stuff like that like some metal in there and like metal is definitely not on the you know top billboard tracks these days or at least it's not you know looked on the same way as like uh you know taylor swift ariana grande um drake and stuff like that like metal will be absolutely left behind and that's also metal's fault for not being able to um be a little bit more accessible but it's metal you know what can you do everything um, works in cycles just... too though It'll yeah come back eventually well I, actually uh, this i mean i'm gonna go off on a tangent right now uh only because i had the same conversation i think metal peaked at like the 2012 era and it could be coming back around um but at this point it's just now you've got to commercialize it as best as you can. And there's some oh, bands yeah, that are sure. trying really hard to do it, um, but it's just not it's not doable. Uh, Bring yeah. Me the Horizon is probably like the best example of them trying to commercialize their product. And you can't pass it off as metal like the metal community is going to disown it. And Bring Me the Horizon is just probably going to keep calling it metal for as long as they want. I mean, I would allowed to. I would have tried because I'm older than you. I would have said metal peaked in the 80s. But you you experienced the metal phase that I was already like, I think too, in too terms of worldwide distribution in comparison, because like metal has significantly grown since the 80s. And I'm not saying the 80s was not in any way, shape or form like terrible. I think it had like really great stuff, especially yeah. with, you know, bands like um, uh, Megadeth, like uh, even Led Zeppelin, which I wouldn't even call metal, to be honest. But mm -hmm. like you've got like some really big bands back in that day and that like Iron Maiden, like those those bands have done some really good things that I think modern metal isn't able to accomplish at all. Yeah. Because those are legends. Like it, those bands, are, the bands I listen to wouldn't exist if it weren't for those bands. Right, but right. in terms of uh, accessibility, you know, across all these platforms, metal is probably at the highest it will ever be currently. Um, but whenever I, whenever I bring metal into the conversation of just, uh, you know, what's currently the big Mick thing. Gordon's and I'm going to save us. Mick, I, fuck, I freaking hope so, man. He's got to put that <laughs> doom too. He's got to put that doom eternal soundtrack on Spotify. Spotify. Um, but like, you know what I mean? It's just like it, it's reaching more audiences at a much faster rate. But at yeah. the same time, it's All just not is. it's just not commercialized. You, you yeah. can't do it. Right. Which is understandable, you know. Um, but, you know, this metaverse of gaming and advertisements is like a really big deal. And I, I, I agree with gamers. I'm like, I don't want, you know, intrusive stuff that I don't really care about that I will probably end up spending more money to get out Global of my games system. are already jam packed with intrusive ads like like yeah. literally well, I mean, like, like no that's a mobile gamer experience so like no one who's like an actual major gamer in terms of like the, the home place isn't yeah. like, a mobile gamer but the majority of gamers like like it or not the like her, are mobile gamers like when you look at the whole you know yeah man uh, oh it's <laughs> my, tec my... technically a gamer 
my one of my buddies he's the senior project manager um for for my work and he was super stoked for apex legends and um today he brought it up he's like hey apex legends is coming out very soon have we seen any news about it and i'm like no he's like oh so we, we need to be able to set up like a tournament bracket front and stuff like that there's not going to be custom lobbies like we have right now with our apex legends events and I'm just like, I don't want to do this at all. I don't want to fucking <laughs> Apex Legends mobile. And it's probably going to be busted and ugly as hell. Uh, <laughs> Some people are saying it's, it has features because it's not developed by Respawn that people have been asking for for like a really long time. But they're not in the main version, but they're in the mobile version. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I think, uh, yeah. what the heck was it? Oh, God. Yeah, but I get what you mean. Mobile games have come have come a long way. They they really have. Uh, there's there's Genshin Impact. There's still there's still you know ninety nine bad ones for every one one good one. But but those one good ones have have come a long, a long way. The only one that really matters is Genshin Impact at this point. Like that game is absolutely massive still. PUBG Mobile's huge. Uh, worldwide i mean there's a lot of really good mobile games if you, I, if I would put money it. on it that get, get genshin impact is an absolutely like leader right now across oh every I'm not, I, I don't i don't even doubt that um i just mean like quality wise you know call of duty mobile is also not bad like like it's Our surprisingly good, good. Yeah. that's what i mean yeah. like, every time i go back and i play it uh, if i'm like traveling or something i play like, just a quick game i'm just like man this really isn't bad like it's not amazing yeah. but i was with uh <laughs> I was with my girlfriend at the time, and we were just like, she went to go get like a shot or something like that. I'm like, I'm just gonna pull up called mobile. I'm like, oh my god, this is so much fun, actually. Yeah, it's it's really not really really tight bad. gameplay. And and the cool thing, they've got like every legendary Call of Duty map in there, like like every one from like the entire franchise. You know, like they're there. It's cool. Um. All right. So <laughs> you want to skip Jason Momoa? I don't want to do that one. I don't. <laughs> Dude, I don't even watch TV. <laughs> I, it's a movie. Uh, it's Jason Momoa. It's TV for me. I have zero interest. <laughs> well, for all you Minecraft fans out there, Jason Momoa. I'm a Minecraft fan. I don't care about Jason Momoa. Is gonna st- <laughs> How are you going to make a Minecraft? I don't understand what they're... So you like Minecraft? Yeah, I love Minecraft. Minecraft's awesome. It's like How, one of the best games why, ever. Why is Big Muscle Dude... Like, I don't understand... I don't think it's going to be like an actual IRL movie. I'm pretty sure he's cast as a voice actor. That that could be. That could be. Which I don't know why. I've never thought of like a voice in my life. I'm like, wow, damn, that'd be really cool if Jason Momoa was in here. But I mean, we didn't Dwayne the Rock Johnson, I'd understand. But who, who Jason would've, Momoa? Who would have thought that we would have had a great Sonic the Hedgehog movie or Detective Pikachu? But the, you, know, you know, we'll see. I'm not going to watch it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> These video game movies have been popping these past few years, actually. That's true. Telltale did make a Minecraft show in a way, in a way, and I heard that was actually a great game. That uh, the Telltale. It's also playable on Netflix. Is it really? Yeah, you can go to Netflix right now. You don't have to like get through game version or anything like that. It's literally a normal TV experience, but with hmm. yeah. So speaking of Telltale, uh, I got a, I got a couple things to say about PAX East, which I went to last week. Um, so in general. Uh, PAX East was not amazing this year for for multiple reasons, which I won't won't really get into. Uh, one of the biggest, the, the, I guess, the biggest announcement of the show is that they're making a new Tales from the Borderlands game, which the original was made by Telltale. I didn't see if the new one is made by Telltale or if Gearbox is handling it themselves or with somebody else. Um, but there is a new Tales from the Borderlands game coming. Did you play Tales from the Borderlands? No, not really. It's really, really good. It, I'm not a huge Borderlands guy either. Um, I really don't care about the franchise mm-hmm. much these days. But it honestly is one of Telltale's better games. Um, I, I think the reason is because they could literally do whatever they wanted. It's not a franchise where they had to work within like, you know, a certain box. You know, like The Walking Dead or Batman mm-hmm. or you know, like a pre-established like, you know, you can't do this with this character. It's like it's Borderlands. Who cares? You know what I mean? <laughs> So they were able to just do some outlandish stuff. But I got uh, a funny story for you. Um, I, I, I'm going to avoid saying the game's name. Uh, are, are you a Lovecraft fan at all? No, I don't really know what that is, actually. You don't know who H.P. Lovecraft is? H.P. Lovecraft. Harry Potter? 
No, no, no. no. <laughs> His name was literally H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, no, I have okay. no idea who H.P. Lovecraft is. So he's like, he's one of the most influential horror writers of all time. So like cosmic horror of any type was basically born by H.P. Lovecraft, like as a writer, like back in the early 1900s, like long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. So knowing that and, and his 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 lore and his universe is like like OG, like cosmic horror and stuff. So you know who Cthulhu is, right? Yeah, that's H.P. Lovecraft's most famous oh, creation. Okay. Um, oh, he also uh, wrote the the first uh, novel written in stone with Gilgamesh, right? Uh, that I don't know. That's a joke. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what Gilgamesh even is. Gil okay, the story of Gilgamesh is the, it's like literally the first story ever written. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it, there's that. actually a title to it too. I forgot what it's called, but Gilgamesh was like the the man god. Blah blah blah. It's it's a <laughs> it's a joke. But go on, go okay. on. So the so Cthulhu guy. Okay. Um. So anyway, there's this game that got announced a while back, like very recently, and it, and it was called, uh, it, this is how the developer and publisher described it. It is a Lovecraftian action sci-fi Souls-like RPG, which is like filled with like buzzwords. You know what I mean? Like Lovecraft, yeah. Souls-like, sci-fi action RPG set in space, blah, blah, blah. blah. So this game is playable on the show floor and it comes out like next month and it only got announced like a month ago. Um, and I, and I literally played it for like two minutes. I walked up and I was like, I got to play this. I like, I like Lovecraft stuff and blah, blah, blah. So I play it and I play it for like literally two minutes and it's not good at all. Like it's not good at all. Like my mm -hmm. wife is standing next to me who doesn't play games at all. None ever zero interest. And and so she's just like neutral on everything. And she's like, this game like doesn't look good. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I put down the controller and I turn around and there's these two guys watching me play. And I was like, are you guys the developers? And and they're like, yeah, we, we worked on the game. And I was like, OK, cool. Like, I have a question for you. I was like, what's the Lovecraftian aspect of this? And the guy just goes, yeah. And I'm like, well, no, like, what is what is it about the game that's like inspired by, you know, like Lovecraft, like the works of H.P. Lovecraft? And they're like, well, it's a horror game. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, OK, so how is it? You know, I was like, did you guys say it's like a Lovecraft inspired game or did that? Is that just something that like the Internet came up with? I mean, the guy was like, no, we did. And I was like, OK, so like what part of your game is actually inspired by like H.P. Lovecraft or, or his work? The guy was like. Well, I'm just a developer. I don't really know the lore of the game. <laughs> just like, okay, uh, <laughs> see, you, see you later. Have a good day. And it's like, uh, that, that, I don't know. Like, that's how they sent, uh, you, I don't know, those conven with the conventions and stuff, you got to be really careful about who you send to, like, represent your game. No, or, agreed. Or how you uh, market your game and not just throw a buzzword on there that has nothing to do with your actual game why would you throw a developer there like what's the developer supposed to do i mean like i know why you would throw a de developer there because usually a developer knows what the hell they're doing yeah yeah i, I was mean, like homie he did not know what the hell he was doing <laughs> he, he he was probably he's probably like an environmental you know artist or something i i don't freaking know i didn't ask i was just like oh god here we go i, I just i just walked away how did how did I get Irma to go to PAX? I uh, I don't know. She she just agreed. I I, I don't know. He bribed her. Yeah. <laughs> With Uncharted. She just wanted to go to Boston. I think she's never been there before. So. Boston. Boston. And if you've never driven in Boston, you should never drive in Boston. It's not fun. Man, dude, I drove like I didn't drive, but I was driven around. Philadelphia and New Jersey, and it was the most horrific experience of my life. Um, driving in any major city really sucks. It's so stressful. At least in like some major areas of Texas, like they're better at it though. I mean, like people straight up in like northeast or east side of the United States, from what I can tell, those two states or those two like yeah states, like oh my god, like an actual death ride the entire think... time. I think it depends how well the city is organized. Like, you know, like I, I can't speak to the cities in Texas, but like if the city's organized and like the streets are laid out in in a way that's at least, com you know, if you can com comprehend it, 
uh i think it makes driving there less stressful but like boston the streets are like it's just complete chaos like they're mm -hmm. it feels like the streets are the exact same way they were when uh when it was founded in you know 1776 or whatever when the city was built and they've just stayed that way ever since. And nobody ever looked at it and was like, oh, yeah, this is this will never get bigger. This makes no sense. Yeah. Oh, uh, I would say like San Antonio in particular downtown is pretty bad, actually, and like in terms of the way it's built out. But it's an old city and San Antonio has just been constantly expanding outwards, not mm -hmm. just remaining inside. Mm -hmm. So in this case, like San Antonio, it sort of gets a pass because you could go everywhere and it'd still be pretty no like navigational. It shouldn't be an issue. Mm -hmm. I'd say Houston is probably the worst out of all of our major cities. Uh, Austin is probably like second to worst, um, but that's like the benefit of the doubt there. Austin has one major highway, and that's the interstate where does, highway. Where does Joe Pierogi live? Who's he Joe moved Pierogi? to Texas, right? It's Joe's, that's my nickname for Joe Rogan. Oh, Joe Rogan. He moved to Austin. He moved to Austin? Okay. Yeah, he moved to Austin. Um, I was like, who the hell's Joe Pierogi? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's but, an inside uh, joke with my. San Antonio is like a little bit better. Dallas is just massive, so it's just a matter. It's just the value of like how are the highways built, and the highways are huge. So, um, like I barely, if ever, experienced any kind of traffic mm -hmm. in Dallas. I've been to Pittsburgh and I've been to Philadelphia. I I don't have any really horrible experiences in either. Boston and New York City are my worst, my least favorites. Yeah, I heard in like New York City, it's just basically like a actual nightmare. Even it's like just a free for all. Walkable, even it's walkable, like it's it's literally yeah. just a free for all. Like it doesn't matter what's going on. You put your car where you need to put it when you want to put it there, and that's it's bad. Rip. There's no Bucky's either. Um, do we want to talk about Elon buying Twitter? Yeah, Daddy Elon, let's go. Uh, I did. I. <laughs> I'm I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing, man. I, I'm going to sound like those same people that I've been bashing all podcasts. <laughs> take, take a step back. It's going to be OK. It's going to be fine. Literally, it's like, if anything, the only thing that's going to change is the Tumblr refugees will leave, which is the only thing that I am. We had okay Tumblr refugees on Twitter. Oh, my God. Did you not notice? No. Dude, it's been so bad. Like when Tumblr got bought out by who was it? Yahoo or Verizon? I forgot who they applied a lot. And I mean, a lot of restrictions on it because Tumblr was basically a free accessible porn site for a while. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. About. It was really bad. <laughs> um, Like I, I had a Tumblr. I love Tumblr. It was fun. But like you could literally go. It was fun. Cute dogs you, called and, it. <laughs> you could literally just scroll down and get cute dogs, funny, uh, funny meme. uh, And then boom, like anal. <laughs> like i'm not even kidding that's how it was and like that's how it is right now for twitter and that's that's rough that's a that's a result of my friend like the people i follow on my twitter um but like the accessibility for it is like super bad so like in this case it'd be great to see like more i i do agree with with elon by getting everybody verified and not letting people just get these special approvals for being verified right like you've twitter will say oh you need to have a commercialized product and stuff like that um it also started nazism and grooming um uh, yeah yeah no you're 100 percent correct tumblr um then? yeah tumblr was like really bad about it like they, they they didn't really have strong policies around it but they had strong communities on there too that advocated against it um but that that wasn't enough so whenever they started whenever whoever bought it like started policing it a little bit more those pretty people much, left pretty and twitter much everything was like the next place eventually for it. becomes a, a haven or something. I think for the lot for a while, Twitter was a haven for small businesses. Uh, and then also it became a haven for niche, like like niche right now. But but I mean like niche as in like it was a little bit more valuable because it was it was as loud or as convoluted as it is now. And now, like in this case, politically, I I I want Twitter to stay out of that space. I don't think it needs to be in that space. And that's the point, like the verification process too. Like there's people who just get blue check marks for what? Because they're they, they have a lot of followers on YouTube and that creates a false sensehood, a false sentiment, a falseness of just like who you should be representative and like what your voice means as an impact. I mean, I've seen people who have blue check marks on Twitter that get absolutely zero nothing in terms of impressions, likes, retweets, you name it. But there's people out there who just like say 
stupid things because they can like david hogg like come on i uh, uh, say what you want about his why politics. does anybody care about verifications I, I don't get it. like so it's two things one it's clout right now like well, that's yeah what, that's what i mean it's worthless that's one thing but they're like they're general people no matter what side of the political spectrum that you're on that you use that blue check mark as if like you have a way more powerful voice and in this case i think twitter algorithm does make that uh, just push that a little bit further than what it normally is. That stretch is specifically. That I can see if the algorithm uh, boosts people who are who are verified. I they think, say I, they I think don't, but I think they do. I think it's one of those things where, and where yeah, if you're verified, power, people are more likely to follow you. It's the Xerxes Lannister thing. Power resides where people believe it does. You know mm-hmm. that that's that's yeah. Like think about it too. Like there's, I think you and I, I'm I'm definitely a Twitter power user. Like my literal job is you know. Oh, yeah. I Social love media Twitter. management. Yeah. Um, so like we get it, like we understand what that means. But if we look at Twitter at like the normal capacity of like a person who gets their news off a of TV still and just takes to Twitter and happens to see, you know, people with like verification tweets and stuff like that inter- interact and engage, it just creates too much like collusion, not collusion. You know that's the wrong word. It just creates up too much like ambiguity. It, it doesn't create conversation. It literally becomes what everybody, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, it creates just really bad conversation that's not productive. Most you of the know what time. I find really funny is like to for for me, I lo- I love Twitter. It's my favorite social media platform by far. With that said, out of all the people that I know in my, in my personal life, and I don't and I don't just mean like immediate friends and family. I mean like my coworkers, like my expanded network. Right, I do not know a single person that has Twitter, likes Twitter, or cares about Twitter. I've, you know, I've got tons of people that I know on Facebook, tons of people on Instagram. You know, everybody's got a YouTube account. Um, TikTok, obviously, tons of people, even people that I never would have expected have, to have a TikTok account, have a TikTok account. And I can't name a single person that I know that's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I have Twitter, and I love Twitter. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. and they always ask me, like, what do you what do you like about it? And I'm always like, it's so simple. It's so easy. Like if I want, like you said, like news, like I can just scroll through and I can like literally learn anything and like uh, what's going on in the world in, in five minutes, you know, yeah. like. And uh, and that's that's a good point to have because I had the same exact thing. Like I got people who are like, I don't see the point in Twitter. I can just get it off of Facebook, which isn't any better in any way, shape or form. Wow. Yeah. But in this case, it's just it, it's interesting that people who don't use Twitter will still hold Twitter accountable for like bad things said on the internet. So like Donald Trump, for example, will use him because he's the glorified example of this is that like you would watch the news and news would cover Donald Trump tweeted this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden people care about Twitter. Yeah. Um, And it like that kind of falsehood is like what needs to guide honestly go away. Um, And and no matter who you are and how do you get rid of that? Uh, verifying everybody for first of all, um, and the only people that really should be, uh, ex- like not accessible but shown to be of like a specific status are businesses, right? So like McDonald's obviously needs to be verified to show it's like the official McDonald's business. Yeah. Um, and they already have a system in place where you could see like senators or representatives yeah. of government on those Twitter pages. Those already exist. Um, but like stuff like that because now it takes away the the desire to engage with a verified or to try to become a verified um and also takes away like other outlets from literally just like exposing verifieds because of the fact that they're verified you know who got suggested to me today is when i got home from work it's at like five thirty six o'clock to follow hmm. I guess I, I literally don't know <laughs> it's pick any person any human being uh mr beast Elon Musk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Elon Musk's Twitter is actually pretty funny. I fucking hate Elon Musk. So, <laughs> dude, he shit posts like every day. It is I know. hilarious. And that's why, like, I I don't know. I've got I, I, I really don't want to like, like rant, but like uh, I'm hearing a lot of people who are suddenly like. Like, uh, I don't know, I think Elon Musk is like the second coming of the world. But like in every single case, like a lot, a lot of people, like a lot of people are like super happy that I've seen personally that Elon is buying Twitter are the same exact people who constantly bash and hate on, on cryptocurrency and blockchain and NFTs. And I'm like, rewind the clock, like literally like 12 months ago. 
and Elon Musk was like the number one <laughs> crypto dude, you know, like talking mm -hmm. about how it was going to change the world, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then the infamous Doge pump, you know, like, uh, like, and now they, they've all forgot about that. And they're like, save us, Papa Elon, you know, buy Twitter, buy Twitter and save us from the, the evil uh, shareholders of the world. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's so weird to me. Like, yeah, I don't think people really has understand like, like the value of personality that... type thing going on. Which anybody that yeah. has that, and I don't care who they are, and it's not even necessarily their fault per se. People just flock to certain types of people and, and personalities, and it doesn't make it their fault that they are like that necessarily. But I, I gen generally distrust those types of people because they start to get too much power whether they want it or not. Like, they have too much influence, and it, it really starts to scare me. And maybe that makes me sound like a paranoid, like, basement d dwelling. I'm not saying that they're, like, Illuminati. I'm just saying that I personally start to distrust them because I think it's hard for humans to... We're getting really deep now. I, I think it's hard for humans to understand, like, the responsibility and the power that they wield. Uh, in modern days, especially because a lot of that is like through anonymity on the internet. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard for that person to grasp. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I know I got 75 million followers or subscribers or whatever, but like, it's hard to like put that into like action. You know what I mean? Like this, like physically, what does that mean? Um, but, you know, like I, I remember, uh, oh God, it's getting real deep now. When, um, do you, do you remember like when when a guy um he yeah i believe it was a mosque that he shot up and he like live streamed the whole thing and he was talking about like pewdiepie when he did it yeah i remember that that was like years ago though yeah 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 it was like maybe like three years ago um th just stuff like that and i'm not saying it's pewdiepie's fault that's not what i'm saying i just when it's like those like these cult of personality type things I don't know. I, I just I start to get a little scared. It, it nothing good comes from it usually. Like like these like can, these blind. Can you give an fandoms. example of what Elon is doing that is bad that people that's, would would that's, create their own like identities on to act upon because of Elon Musk? No, I can't. And that's what I'm saying. It doesn't mean that necessarily anything bad will happen. It doesn't mean that, like, I'm not saying it's the Illuminati. I'm not saying the world is ending. I'm not saying that, you know, it just, you know, it's a Spider-Man thing. With great power comes great responsibility, you know, and yeah. it's this, it's this very slippery slope because one misstep, when people believe in you that fervently, um, and then something gets misconstrued or you know, a crazy person sees that you said something and, and, but they believe in you so wholeheartedly like it, it, uh, and, and it doesn't have to be a person necessarily that is super popular. It could happen with anybody, right? It could happen with a pop star who has. I think, I think to what your fans. point is here that you're getting at is I think Elon would agree with you on it. And that's been a lot of his messaging and we don't know what his full, um, uh, you know, plans are for twitter yeah he shared like stuff in bullet points and that's yeah. quite literally it um but i think he has a very similar like ideology about that right because he's saying like there's people with too much power that are having too much control over a specific amount of people no matter how niche or massive small they are mm -hmm. they they there needs to be some sort of controlled method of allowing them to have that freedom to me make that messaging in this place you know, people keep, you know, saying like, oh, Elon just wants like Donald Trump and his fans to be back on Twitter. And it's just like Elon doesn't really probably care about that, to be honest. He'll probably vote in the favor of whatever makes him the most money like anybody would. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, he's not doing it just to let Trump come back and like say something stupid, despite the fact Trump says that he's not even coming back. Let's just go you know, devil's advocate here. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that what a lot of Elon is doing right now is trying to give more empowerment. Um by uh, like by setting more restrictions to an allow that freedom of voice in this case and that can be good and that can be bad at the same time and i think what he's wanting to do so far with what he has shared is that he wants people to be able to responsibly say what they need to 
uh, what they want to, not what they need to, what they want to, and it not be, uh, you know, something that is a subset of cancel culture or people reading into the message so much that they that they make their own actions, and that's not what was being asked of. It doesn't matter if you're Elon Musk, Bernie Sanders, or anybody like that. He what, wants he wants freedom of speech across the entire board. What of, scares of me the most though is that he he seems to believe that he's the only person that can achieve this because he said uh, yeah he he and I just. I don't like that mindset at all. Like, who do you think could though? Uh, like, could you name somebody who would be able to do that? No, I, I'm not even saying. I don't even know if it is achievable. I, I, I don't think the way our our society works. I'm not sure that it is. I think that every platform will eventually, like I was saying, like, like it will be eventually be hijacked or get get pushed into a certain like this is your place, and it, that's not I necessarily think that's what a good is right thing. Now. I think that's what uh, Twitter is right now, actually. It's it's possible. Um, it, I just, I don't know. The I don't know. He, his his mindset that I am the only person in the world that can that can do this is the thing that scares me. Like, I, I think when you, I don't know, I don't know. I'm getting way off track here. We're 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 way <laughs> we're way in the weeds at this point. Well. Uh, it, 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 it's not it's not the whole world's communication right frank it's just it, yeah. this is one singular platform uh it, it, if it would be more problematic even more problematic if a single person owned twitter facebook instagram tiktok you yeah know, that's what in, they're trying to do whatsapp uh whatever i mean if we look at it in the in the broad scheme of things like i think that we're already in that place right now where it's just a singular mindset already exists within that platform. And it's not about will it get that way with with Elon? It already is. I think it's already achieved it like at that point. Um, and, you know, mindset think, is doom and gloom. <laughs> mind, yeah, mindset is doom and gloom. Halo players on Twitter taking up all of the trending. Um, no, I mean, I think we're already there. And I think media in particular need to stay off of social media. They need to be able to have a place that isn't going to just be like spewing of just false information and facts at the same time but like twitter shouldn't be your place to do that to create you know convolu convoluted conversation and putting these people out each other's throats like we talked about it literally earlier today it's just like look halo doom and gloom kid you could tweet all about everything's you doom and gloom nobody twitter, gives a dude it's nobody gives halo. a damn it's, it's not just halo yeah well not hate not overwatch which good segue let's talk about overwatch too coming oh, out God. tomorrow it's, it, it, yeah, I, what I a segue! A lot of doom and gloom. Uh, no way! I hear I've seen only only good things from from people. I I hear I I'm I I believe from what I've seen, like my personal opinion, I'm happy to have Overwatch Two back. But for those of you who didn't hear, the Overwatch Two beta starts tomorrow. You can get it if you don't get invited. They're doing Twitch drops for invitations. Not tomorrow, um, but the day after. Yes, I'm excited to have it back. I I wholeheartedly agree that the development path has been absolutely crazy makes no sense i'm excited they've reworked a lot of characters we had a lot of new maps coming they've um, reworked the entire game bro yeah, have you seen 5v5 um yeah have I you mean, seen gameplay yet i've watched a little bit but i haven't like deep dove it like i've seen like 30 second bits i've watched probably a good like two hours worth of content so far and a lot of those players who are in a closed alpha had like main bullet points to say in three which would be that the gameplay mechanics are completely changed. Like it's no longer a game where it's just, you know, you, you point and like you, you half ass aim point click kind of shooter, right? You had mm -hmm. like your, your Genji's, you had your McCree's or your Cassidy's now. Uh, and you've had like, you know, your, your, your uh, kind of like very specific shooters that do require a little bit more skill, but every character is now like that. It's not like, you could be Winston and hold your left click or Symmetra and hold your left click and then get some thumb. No, they actually have reworked every single character for it to be a little bit more precision. So like fighting and stuff like that isn't just like I am all over the map and just causing chaos. Well, um, each character requires a lot more in-depth mechanical skills. Yeah, and I think that I mean, a lot of the problems that Overwatch eventually ran into was that there were so many it, like the power creep got so insane that it, it based like you said it wasn't even really a shooter in the end it was like it was impossible to kill anybody first of all because it was non-stop mm -hmm. like damage absorption and stuns and like this is just like 
like the actual like oh, this is a first-person shooter about, you know, killing the other team to make progress, and no matter what mode that may be, was totally mm-hmm. lost uh, after, like, a year or so. And it was all just stun, 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 stun. Like, all, 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 all. Yeah, and, and to my point, on the next point on that, not the bullet, but it's just, you know, this kind of plays into uh, a little bit of the game type. So, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, the payload uh, where you have to, like, mm-hmm. push the payload to get to point A, from point B to point A. Um, leave the door to the garage unlocked. We, I don't know how to lock a garage to begin with, but okay. Um, but I'm sorry, it's got a text message. <laughs> okay. um, but, uh, yeah, like it, it looked, um, oh, from what was said and what I saw is that payloads are no longer, like, this item where you have to babysit and wait for everybody to eventually get their ults to everyone just all slam their ults at once yeah and then see just like hecticness happen um each character has been reworked to also be not just a hero shooter where it's just like oh you have to specifically have this character to comp against this other hero Mm -hmm. you're not reliant on the hero that you choose it's more reliant on the role that you choose now Mm -hmm. so it's no longer like oh um you know Winston uh, needs to switch to Diva because they have a character that's yeah. going to just you know do a lot of AOE. It's it's specifically designed for more role based power stuff. Um, and ults are no longer like this thing that just create that entire like chaos moment. Like so the whole that match into... relies on like a Hanzo ult. Exactly. And then like second, it comes down to the map. So I saw and heard that freedom of map uh you know accessibility was much larger so maps are larger but not like in the scale of things but more interdimensionally where like there's more pathways there's more mm. open availability to kind of like escape into a fight rather than just turn around and go back the way you came um there's there's a lot more happening on the maps so freedom of of choice on maps is really big too uh and then i would say third uh shit what was my third point um overwatch porn yeah, Diva is making a return to Overwatch porn. Uh, <laughs> no, but like I forgot what the third point was, but like those are two major ones, which is just the hero works and the map so far. Yeah. Um, and like from what I saw, like it looked really good. Like I, I saw Winston like have a left click where he was aiming and pointing and shooting, you know, and I was like, wow, no more left click. I can't wait to play a game that just al- allows the player to have individual skill rather besides just getting your cracked out Genji to kind of like, you know, make clutch plays and stuff for you. What do you think will happen if I go to Tumblr and I search uh, Overwatch on screen? I'm pretty sure you'll see people with a lot of a little bit of uh, <laughs> interaction or engagement. <laughs> oh, what's my tw- is, is, I'm just checking my Tumblr still up. That's not what I was getting at. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm excited. It's the beta, Kyle. It's just beta. The beta starts tomorrow. It's it's not the final release. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to play it. So maybe maybe we can play it together sometime. I'll have to shoot you a battle.net friend invite or whatever. Yeah, no, I'm totally down. Uh, it'd be really fun to get in some Overwatch two action. Uh, yeah. My coworker is like a huge Overwatch nut. Yeah. Um, so he's excited, like very very excited. He wanted to somehow hold a tournament tomorrow. I'm like, I don't even think they're gonna pass him. Uh, yeah. bro. That's how excited he is. <laughs> That's funny. Um, also coming out this week, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt, the Vampire Battle Royale. If you've watched my streams, you know I've played it a, a bunch. It's actually pretty good. Uh, Bug Snacks goes multi-platform tomorrow. And on Game Pass Day 1. Wow. <laughs> Bug Snacks, dude. Oh, my God. I heard it was actually not bad. Yeah. Who develops that again? What was their previous game? The same people who made another big game. I forgot who it was. Yeah, but I can't game. remember which one it was. Oh, God, it's bothering me now. The people who made Knack. <laughs> who made what? Knack? It's not Knack, is it? No, it's not Knack. Developers, Young Horses. Terrible name. <laughs> they made a pretty big game uh, before, though. I don't know what the hell it was, though. Yeah, Octodad. I like... Octodad. There you they go. Oh. <laughs> And then there's an indie game called Retail Royale coming out, and I'm going to be playing this one for sure. The, the basically, uh, the concept is it is a battle royale game that takes place inside an IKEA, and you have to kill each other with the items inside the IKEA. So, I'm gonna go to the, the kitchen section and just get myself uh, a Dutch oven, hammers, uh, chairs. Who who knows? But 
that it's going to be one of those games that's fun for an hour or two at least. Uh, My favorite. Yeah. <laughs> now we have our uh, Don't Miss It for this week. I have the upcoming game. You have the existing game. You want to go first? You want me to go first? Man, I have absolutely nothing for you. I'm not even kidding. Okay. <laughs> if you want to do an upcoming game, that's fine, too. We we can... Who cares, man? Think of a, think of a game that you think people think should play. I'll go I first. I think people should play Hogwarts Legacy because J.K. Rowling made a phenomenal universe that everyone should be a part of. Man. Oh, man. No, okay. I'm done memeing. You uh, go first. <laughs> So mine, mine was the uh, the one game that I discovered that I didn't know about, uh, that I really thought looked good on the floor of, of PAX East. It's called Squish. It's a four player, almost like Super Smash Brothers style game, but you're not trying to knock each other off the screen. There's these like Tetris like pieces that are that are falling, and the f the four characters are like jumping back and forth to try to actually squish each other with these Tetris pieces as as they fall, and uh. And, Interestingly enough, I watched a bunch of people play it and I had fun just like watching people play it. It's one of those type of like party game kind of things. Super simple concept. Anybody could play. And, uh, you know, it's probably going to it launches in May. It's probably going to be like 10 bucks tops. Um, maybe it's even free to play. I don't know. But uh, check it out. It's called Squish. I think I watched the trailer on stream uh, yesterday and I think it's going to be a good little Good little fun indie game to play with some, especially if you have some friends to play it with. It'd be, that definitely be a good time. Nice. Um, you know what? I don't know if I've actually done it. I will give another game that you should play. Uh, I don't know if I have done it, but I remember talking about it. I'll say Sekiro. Sekiro. I don't think you have done that. Sekiro Shadows Done Twice. Dies Twice. I actually really like that. Uh, whenever it came to Souls games, like Dark Souls just never hit it for me. Uh, and then. I remember Sekiro came out and I'm like, man, dude, this game's like a pain in the ass. I don't want to play it. Sekiro. Sekiro. Um, but then like the Series X came out and then I bought that and Sekiro on the console or at least for Xbox is uncapped frame rate. So whenever you boot that game up, the game will natively play at the power that it's on. So it ran a locked 60 frames. And that was kind of like the showcase game for me because there wasn't really anything else available for the Series X at that time. So I played the hell out of that game and I made a lot of like angry mistakes too. Like I broke a controller. Is it as um, hard as the Souls games you think? I think it's harder actually because with Souls it's pretty predictable. Like all you got to do is just kind of like remember, you know, this goes for every kind of Souls like game is that you got to remember their attack patterns, blah, blah, blah. But Sekiro um, takes it a little bit step further. You can't just get around to somebody in the back and then, you know, stab them in the back. Sekiro. Uh, requires a little bit more patience where you need to where you can actually counter and then do a counter attack by uh, getting like their their counter gauge all the way up um, and that requires just a little bit more patience of timing so it, like imagine just constantly parrying in souls or in um oh, or an elden ring and being able to do like a big move on that so stuff I'm like here. that's cool but also the verticality with like your hand that you had on there was really cool so um, I love Sekiro. Great, great storyline. Uh, had multiple storylines, too, that you could follow. And really, you never really got a lot of storyline in, in Souls games in the past. I, I, it, it does kind of stand out as the weird, like, um, of all the From games. It, it stands out as, like... It is the most unique. The redheaded really stepchild, in a way, but not in a bad way. Like, uh... It was also weird because Activision helped publish it. That, 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 I was going to say, I wonder if Microsoft is going to end up with this franchise now. I don't know who owns the rights. Um, uh, no, they, they said that they don't. They From owns it? Second, yeah, From will own it. Okay. Uh, Activision kind of just helped with the publishing of it. I'm looking up the... Uh, i got to find if I can find the sales of yeah, it. I know it, I know it, it was pretty, pretty solid. I went to my Steam to see if like there was a game that I, I haven't played yet or that I haven't talked about yet. And yeah, it, it is actually on the front page for Steam right now, which is really good. I, I'm, it looks like Elden Ring is doing the getting work from people. software really wanted to. Yeah, getting more people. I mean, I, I know uh, I saw Elden Ring sold 12 million Souls copies, building. I think, first month. And I think I saw that it took Dark Souls 3, like three years yeah, or Souls something like that to, join, yeah. to sell that much. So Elden Ring definitely, there was all these these rumors that blew up like a week or two ago that Sony was buying from software and blah, 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 blah. And I, I went on this like rant on Twitter about how it makes absolutely no sense. A for Sony to buy from software. I mean, it's anybody who would own from software. I mean, you're getting it obviously 
amazing developer. But like it, it doesn't fit what Sony is looking for. It, it's already what Sony is good at. The, you know, the, the cinematic third person action games. It doesn't fit mm -hmm. like what they're seeking. Games as a service and multiplayer, there's their weaknesses, which is what they're trying to fill with acquisitions. But also the price of From Software for any buyer with Elden Ring releasing now, probably just like the price of From Software probably just like tripled. So yeah, like, what's like, me up. yeah, and it was already probably pretty darn. It, what's interesting, too, is the amount of copium like playstation stands are making just i know. to try and make sure that they don't buy them they're like well blue point makes a better souls game and i'm yeah. just like they've made <laughs> one bro well, the it, week, the it, week it's a good that, game but chill <laughs> the week before that they were all they were all 100 percent uh 100 percent sony had bought kojima productions done deal done deal the whole week and then kojima was like no we're we're, we're an independent studio we're staying independent and then the from <laughs> software thing happened and like even the guy that ended up that started the from software rumor he ended up like retracting and saying that like the thing that started the whole rumor was just him doing like an analysis, like and like a history of from software thing. And he wasn't saying he had inside information, but everybody was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, you know, like they're, they're going to but they're buying from like it's like, there was like yeah. a Sony marketing exec who came out on Twitter, and said, look, that has nothing to do with it. I just I just really like soul stuff. So I just yeah. have a statue like yeah. that. You're right. People read into it like it was like a Phil Spencer thing. Phil Phil's Spencer the only moment. one who who <laughs> pulls that. I mean, Phil hasn't even done anything to like even like make that claim anymore for anybody now. So. I mean, like, in this case, like, it was so interesting, like, the past week to just see people, like, go up in arms about, like, how From Software is a bad developer and that Sony should just develop their own Souls games because they got <laughs> Blue Point. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm okay with that. Demon Souls remake was great. It's a, per it's a yeah. really pretty game. And, like, I will agree with some people to say, like, yeah, that's probably, like, one of the best-looking next-gen games available today. I don't think it was massively successful, though. I, I, it wasn't. I, it was, I it's did... a niche game on a, on a console nobody had. Yeah, I mean, I I, I did hear that, that Bluepoint may um, end up making, like, a Bloodborne sequel, which which would make Please. sense. Yes, um, that'd be great. I, but, I, like, it also kind of, it's kind of productive if Miyazaki isn't making it. I mean... We'll see. I mean, if they let them do Demon Souls, and then maybe if they let them remaster Bloodborne or something, um, did you did you know that there's like a very like Bloodborne inspired show on Epics right now? <laughs> I would have never guessed Epics Epic, had dude, anything, dude, bro. I know, I know, and that's why <laughs> no, that's why nobody has heard what of it. What a question! It's got Adrian Brody in it. I just discovered this, and I watched really? the trailer on stream the other day. And it definitely looks pretty bloodborne. Uh, it's based on a Stephen King book, believe it or not. Um, I don't know, I I've never that. seen a single thing on Epics, but you want to talk about two washed up writers? It's Stephen King and J.K. Rowling. Whatever their <laughs> opinions on things, I, I, I just think, don't care. I think I Stephen care King's them. reputation as an actual writer is still intact. I think he should stay that way. I mean, he also he doesn't make amazing things. Like I think he's just made really good things because he was cracked down on cocaine. And then just like, you know, at the very end of all of his books, just didn't know how to end them because I mean, he had no more blow. Just just to get back to the, the Twitter thing, too. I think Twitter has 100 percent ruined a lot of people for us, like literally yeah. it, and not yeah. not just Twitter in fairness. But it goes back to that thing of like um, and I actually heard somebody say this in a totally different context. I was already feeling this way, but I heard somebody say in an interview um, and it was somebody who was not talking about social media at all. But he said. The one thing that you should never, never do in your life is the one thing that you want to do your whole life. He's like, never meet your heroes, because when you do like, like, I promise you, like they're and he wasn't trying to be negative. He's just like, it's not going to live up to yeah. like, what you expect. No, and then you're you're going to lose like that, like inspiration, you know, like. No, sad, I agree man. with that. Like, I remember meeting. um who it was because like this was like a moment where like oh man i met him he was not that great actually um i'm pretty sure oh no it's whenever i went to go like meet fallout boy uh and like all of them were dicks like there's a bunch of like, <laughs> dudes who just like were there they're like assholes pretty much and i was like you know what that was that not sucks. what i planned it to be like they yeah. weren't like exactly mean to me intentionally they didn't like beat me up or anything like yeah. that i was like wow that was like not as great as i thought it was gonna be and then like kind of after that i looked at like every like big person that i like i looked up to a little bit with like a lot of respect 
a lot differently. So yeah. now, like, if, you know, if I, if like Elon Musk, like, walked up to me, I'd be pretty happy. Like, dude, you're Elon Musk. That's cool as hell. But like at the end of it, like that it's conversation, like, yeah. I would, I would be like, yeah, you're also Elon Musk. I know you've yeah. got like probably some opinions I disagree with and I'd rather I not think, find out. I think my best experiences meeting, uh, people like famous people are ones that were like totally random and like almost kind of awkward. So like two that come to mind, uh, was when I met, uh, Hideki Kamiya, um, from Platinum Games and, you know, old Capcom, like Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, mm -hmm. Okami at PAX. I don't know, like, how great his English uh, is, but, like, the whole encounter was just, like, kind of funny, and he was, like, giving me, like, hand signals, like, thumbs up <laughs> and, like, stuff. <laughs> and he just, it was just funny, like, and I'm like, can I take a picture with you? And he just, he just like, did this, and I like, took a picture. And that was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was just very genuine, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. was, and then uh, the other one that was kind of funny was, uh, this was, like, 10, 15 years ago. A friend and I went to a Limp Bizkit concert, and we were like hanging out out back after the concert and the drummer for Limp Bizkit like came out back and only me and my friend were out there. And like it was kind of this like weird like what do we do kind of thing like you know like I don't know we're just standing here with a drummer from Limp Bizkit and the guy like he we didn't say anything we were just like standing there like looking at him from like three feet away and the, the guy was like you got some shit for me to sign or something? It was like, this like <laughs> and my friend was like, oh yeah. He like pulled something out and like, and then he signed it and he's like, all right, cool. Thanks, man. Thanks guy. Like that was, I don't know. It just, it was just funny. That's funny. Yeah. I think the best, uh, I, I want to call them heroes, but it was really cool. And I, I saw people like much differently as a developer too, is I met John Unishek and Grim brother one from Halo. Uh, Grim was in charge of, uh, lore at the time and john uh unishek was community manager at the time and it was gears uh gears of war 4 and halo 5 uh mlg turn uh, event this was like in 2018 i think mm -hmm. and like i saw them like because i was working production for gears and i saw them like oh my god y'all guys are awesome like i love y'all like y'all have done like some really cool stuff for the community and they were like genuinely nice dudes mm -hmm. they were like no we don't deserve that like we're, we're, we, we love that you love halo that kind of thing and they were nice enough cut to like let me get like a video real quick of them and like some photos of me and him. But I was like, hey, I have a friend who's like a huge machinima person. He loves mods for Halo and he's like the big advocate of like Halo and stuff like that. I'd love if you get like a photo of him or a video from him. And they're like, hey, Arza, like we heard that you're, in, you're a huge machinima fan. We thank you so much for, for being here. And like it was really cool. And I was like, man, wish more people were like that. But yeah. like, you know, it makes it much more special that it was these people in particular. Yeah. Famous people, man. I think it's people. If you could meet, but uh, uh, it should be maybe next podcast. We'll do maybe next podcast. I'm, one, I'm getting the one text person, messages. One person you want to meet. One person I want to meet. No, I want to meet Mayor. I want to meet Mayor Reynolds. <laughs> I, I did get to meet at PAX. That was actually the saving grace for me. I got to meet uh, a bunch of people from the Split Gate team who I had been like developing like online friendships and relationships with for like years. So I got to meet them in person, which is cool. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys, I think we're heading out for this week. And we'll be back here next Monday at 7 p.m. Central. Yeah, Central. Hopefully we won't we'll be, be tweeting it. Tw Elon's going to turn it off. Yeah, uh, yeah. All our, so all our Twitters. Do you remember when Obama called it the Twitters? Wasn't it Obama? Yeah, I think it was Obama. I think it was what they called it the Twitters. I, um... I would have put it past Mitt Romney either, actually. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Mitt Romney. Remember yeah, that guy? Mitt Romney. Staples Wolf. guy. <laughs> Do you know he's almost like 80 years old? He's like really old, but he's like oh, in weird. really good shape for, for his age. He didn't look too bad, but he was like, at, no, I mean, that was actually no, like a good, good, like almost 10 years ago, 10 years yeah, ago. But I mean, he's for his age. He's in like really good. He looks pretty good. 1947. Yeah. So what's that? Jesus. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, he's pretty old. World War Two, baby, man. He's 75. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> you wouldn't catch me that Christ, old. Jesus Christ, man. This senator from Utah now, though. So I think everybody in Utah is over 75. Mitt like Romney, a rule. If you're going to live 20, there. 22. Let's see here. He doesn't look bad at all. Holy no, crap. that's what I'm saying. Put him in presidency. He's going to look like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We're going to be back. Uh, next week, maybe we'll be talking about Overwatch 2 impressions. Uh, who knows what else? Oh, like I'll some, definitely have some stuff to say about The exciting thing too. about news is uh, you never know what's going to come, so you got to come to every podcast.
<laughs> and Jadai will actually be on camera next week, maybe. Yeah, I definitely will. Okay. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Have a good night. Later, y'all.